Well, hello and welcome. You find yourself checking out the Loophole VX6 HD 1-6x24, featuring the Fire.G BDC reticle and multi-gun CDS turrets. This is a second focal plane scope, so as we increase the magnification from minimum to maximum 1-6, to the reticle will not change size. Another thing we can take note of while we do that is the eye box does not shift between 1-6. to I noticed that with a couple of loopholes in the past that when you go from minimum to maximum magnification, albeit slightly their larger magnifications, it would shift the eye box, which is something I absolutely hate. Another thing I can't say I love is the illumination. There it is at full. For whatever reason, the last VXR that I had reviewed from Loophole didn't impress me with the illumination either, and that was red. This one being green, I think that has something to do with it as well. The second you push the button to have the illumination go dimmer, it gets lost completely, even in this room light, which is not all that bright. I figured the green illumination might be better on this, but unfortunately, it's very reminiscent of the Trigicon AccuPower 1-4 that I had reviewed many months ago that was also green illumination and did not impress in the slightest. In lower light, the illumination does work far better, but it is far from what I would consider daytime bright. That's reserved for things like the P4XI, the PSTs, the Razer HDs, etc, etc. I also must apologize, I've been trying to get this review out for a very long time. Unfortunately, a mix of people sending a lot of scopes in and some videos getting corrupted uh, sort of stunted that. But enough bad, let's talk about some good, the turrets. Pay particularly close attention to the button to unlock it. It not only does that, but it also functions as a rotational indicator. We are at our maximum magnification of 6x with maximum illumination. Down here it appears to be pretty bright because it is actually really dark down here. Anyway, this scope is in MOA so there's going to be no way of me tracking it 100% perfectly. However, we can still manage to see if it resets itself to zero quite well. Illumination does not need to be on for this because it's only going to deter us away from our center point so I'm going to shut that off and let's give this elevation knob a twist. So. We're locked. There's our zero. Lock. Good. Got a bunch of turns. That is the maximum extent of our elevation gain, which is something like 38 MOA. Let's reset it to zero, and it should. Listen for the click. Light click. There we go. Elevi uh, not elevation. Windage should be about the same. That's all we have for our windage. Click. There we go. I had my finger over it and going to the right. That's all we have for our windage, which is honestly more than you'll probably ever really need. Going back to zero and click, click, boom. Perfect. So the reticle is pretty nice. The illumination is a little bit subpar but it tracks very well, and the turrets are awesome. They feel really good, they sound good, they have the nice locking feature, as well as the rotational indicator, which a lot of scope manufacturers don't get right. The fact that Loophole was able to incorporate both the lock for the turret and for the rotational count is sensational. Anyway, let's take a look at it in the real world. Here we are at 1x at our 30 to 400 yard line, well, realistic environment and we're going to check the power lines real quick to see if we see any sort of fish shine or deformation at 1x there is a little bit of fish shine going on it's albeit so slight you might not really notice it unless you're looking for it but me i look for these sort of things 
taking up to our maximum magnification of 6x at 30 yards, you can see the image in the center is razor sharp. Colors are washed out due to the fact it's a very bright sunny day and this scope lets in a ton of light. Illumination is on full and you can just make it out in the daytime. So not ideal for what I would consider quote unquote full daytime bright, but it is noticeable. In anything less than perfectly bright environments like this, it is no problem however, so that's good to report. The image is very sharp and looks fantastic. Typically at 6x at 30 yards, you should see some blurring on to the image like you see in some other LPVOs I've reviewed, but not with this one. It just goes to show you that the quality of the optics do go a long way of giving you a much better product. As we focus our attention to the 400 yard steel door, note two things. One, the field of view, which is fantastic at 1x, and how little of the scope body you can see. It really is excellent, and it can be tweaked a little better at lower magnifications to see even less of it. You will note that the colors got a little bit better and the brightness went down a little bit. I had to fix this in post because it was kind of washed out. Again, partly due to how much light this LPVO lets in. It is insane how bright this thing is and just it's friggin amazing. What else is amazing is just how sharp everything is to the center of the image. We do have a touch of blurring to the far left, which is odd because just earlier at 30 yards, there was none to speak of. I don't know if maybe I had this at the very extremes of where it could be mounted for 6x magnification, but you know what? It all works pretty good nonetheless. We pan across the rooftop, zero chromatic aberration to be found. This is partly due to how bright it is out, but everything inside from that 30 yard pole, which by the way, there's no blur to it anymore. It looks razor sharp all the way out to those 800 yard power transformers is basically perfect as good as you could possibly get from any sort of optic, let alone a 1-6 to LPVL. Illumination can still just be made out. I do wish it was a little bit brighter for me and my uses with an LPVL, but as you'll see throughout the rest of the video, in anything less than bright daylight environments, it excels beautifully. I give you guys a taste of what the iBox is at 1x, shifting it from side to side. I really like that when you go into the shadows, like right there, you can still see the illumination. You should be using an LPVO with both eyes open anyway, and it makes it that much better to have the dot superimposed if you can't see the target properly. At 3x, you still have the exact same level of performance. The eye box is wide and forgiving, and you can still very easily make out the illumination, which is sensational. You can still see the illumination when you're off in the shadows here at 6x. 6x, it does get tight, shifting it from side to side, as you can see. If you're off by a very minor amount, it will go completely black. If you shoot with both eyes open like you should, even if you can't see through the scope, but you can still see the illumination, the dot should be superimposed in your other eye and roughly on your target. We don't spend a whole lot of time here at 1,000 yards, nor do I remember to include some elevation into this, but as you saw from the tracking test earlier, even with roughly sheesh, 15 mils of elevation, it was still very clear and sharp. 1,000 yards, Everything is sensational. I'll be damned if this isn't one of the better performances out of a 6x LPVO I've ever got my hands on. Everything is sharp, clear, with good colors, and you can just make out everything with relative ease. Could you really ask for much more? Well, how about low light environments? How does this thing let in light in darker environments as opposed to what we just saw in, you know, a beautiful bright sunny day? To the keen viewer, you might have noticed that the trees grew awfully fast. Well, that is because this video is from last summer. Uh, yes, I said I've been trying to make this video for a long time. It's been about a year. Uh, this is one of the few videos that was not corrupted from the last shoot. The video was still good, so I figured I would include it as opposed to having to refilm it. Illumination in environments like this is sensational. You don't need much more. There is a little bit of contrast lost in the areas such as the brick building. You can't make out the bricks as easily as you saw earlier, but I'll be damned if this thing still doesn't let in a whole lot of light. It is difficult to distinguish things of similar colors, but other than that, I think it's actually a very admirable performance. And with that, let's move into a darker environment, the laundry room. One thing I hate about push button illuminations is not the fact that it comes on maximum brightness, it's that when you get to the minimum brightness, it blinks a couple of times. And if you try cycling through that, you're just wasting time, you don't know where you are. It's only until you start seeing the illumination come up that you realize that you are at maximum brightness.
Pew pew. As you can see in a darker environment, the illumination works extremely well, as does the One X. It's not the best performance I've ever seen, but it's really, really close. I also moved the scope up a little bit so this way you can see less of the scope body. I didn't center the camera 100% behind it, but it doesn't matter. The eye box in this thing at 1X is very forgiving. It makes shooting it an absolute breeze. It's a joy to get behind this thing. It's big, it's bright, it's light. It's everything you might be looking for inside an LPVO. Pew pew. My impersonations really are horrible. Well, here's a location you might not have seen for quite some time. Uh, reason being, I no longer have very easy access to this. No, I didn't get caught or do anything wrong. It's just that I am no longer employed by the area in which this place was very easily uh, accessed from. Illumination is on full. We know because once we get to the maximum, it will blink when we are uh, can't bring it up anymore. Just like how we couldn't bring it down anymore. That's how you know that you're at your either ends of the extreme. It'll blink when you're at the bottom or at the top. At 1x in foliage like this, really close up, it looks absolutely sensational. The same can be said for both the illumination and the 1x here under the canopy. In the shadows, the illumination does pop up a little bit better and works really, really well, albeit the green doesn't stand out from the foliage as much as redwood. No duh. The 1x looks excellent. Phew. If you've ever shot subsonics out of a 1022, that's exactly what that sounded like. So what I was going to say before I was so rudely interrupted by a chipmunk is that the 1x in this thing is fantastic. I truly feel that it's best between 10 to 50 yards or anything beyond that. But even here, we're talking about less than a yard away. It is completely usable with very little to no dif distortion or magnification. Illumination in darker environments, even though we have the flashlight on, is still pretty damn good. It's only when you're in super bright sunshine like that where it does get washed out. Everything else is sensational. So one of my friends from the range called me up and said, Hey, I'm going up to the range. You can come up and film all you want, uh, but it can't be at the range that we normally film at. And you know what? I'm perfectly fine with that. So here we are at the range adjacent to the one that I typically film at. Now, the only difference here, that first paper target that you see is about 10 to 15 yards. There's 50 yards, and those steel targets are roughly 55 to 60 yards away. Here at 1x, again, we have an excellent performance, but it's extremely, extremely bright out there, which is why the illumination is barely visible. We zoom in on the 1x still, and it looks so damn good. The extra brightness of the sun only increases the sharpness and colors and contrast of the image through the scope a truly sensational performance. At the 10 to 15 yard target, we zoom in all the way and unfortunately, it's just a little bit too close for that sort of magnification. We have both 22 LR holes and 30 carbine holes on that paper. The 50 yard paper, 50 yards. as you can see, you can very easily make out both 22 LR and 30 caliber holes at 50 yards. Those steel targets and cans are an absolute joy to shoot at. I shoot at them both with the 22 LR and my universal M1 carbine. Before starting that though, just take a look at how sharp and how fine the string is holding up those soda cans, as well as the chains holding up those steel plates to the left. There's such a huge amount of detail that comes in through this scope that it really is hard to fathom. This is on par with the Razer HD, which I still feel is my number one as far as ultimate clarity goes, but that is a much larger and heavier scope. This thing feels like a toy by comparison with just how small and lightweight it feels. It almost feels like it's made out of plastic that you put on a toy and who cares about. But this thing looks fantastic, feels fantastic, and costs $1,400, which is basically the same price as Razer HD and $600 less than the Kalas K16i. It's honestly not that bad. And now onto the eye box test. Here at 1X, like I've been saying, it is very, very forgiving. 
the illumination is on full and as you can see we can get right on top of it or really far behind it and still be able to properly look through it with relative ease and once at the proper distance to it when we shift our eyes side to side like i've been showing you you can still see the illumination the 1x is stellar and here the 3x is still very good being able to keep the camera by hand focused through it while backing up that far is actually an indication of that it's quite difficult to do on a lot of other lpvos especially it's not always the case here at 6x though you can see i can still fairly keep it in line and good enough to look through it it's a good representation of how an lpvo should function a lot of the times it's really tight and narrow once you get a little bit too far back or too far forward you can't see through it whatsoever shifting it side to side is tight but you can't expect much more than that out of a 30 millimeter tube one to six. Another perk of going to the range that day was I had basically free access to the 100 yard line with the exception of being able to shoot. Illumination is at full and one X, it looks really good as it has this entire video. We zoom in all the way to six X and one thing you might notice at three o'clock, there's a slight blur to the edge versus nine o'clock. I think I had the camera slightly shifted over to one side ever so slightly. This is because I was trying to get as little of the scope body shown as possible with the camera. If I had moved the scope and the camera slightly closer together, this might not have been the case, but you would have seen a little bit more of the scope body. A wise man once told me the evil of good is better. Sometimes when you have it good enough, leave it alone. This right here is the perfect example of that. 190 yard line shows steel targets in a dirt berm. They're non-painted, most of them, and you can easily distinguish them, as well as a couple bowling pins up on the grass and sprinkled throughout the dirt. This is a phenomenal performance and shows a great clarity of both contrast and sharpness. Being able to distinguish between multiple targets of similar colors is a very important thing to me. Onto the 200 yard paper target, and you can easily make out where it says X, 10, and 9 in the black. Absolutely sensational from a 6X scope. We pan across the 200 yard line to the steel targets to the far right, and I believe that's a 12 inch gong in the middle, flanked by a 6 or a 4 inch steel plate. That would make those targets 2 or 3 MOA, and at 6x with this reticle, it would make hitting those a joke. The 300 yard high vis paper targets, well, you can see them, they're there, and they are, well, very high visibility. Moving up to the 320 yard steel targets, which I often typically shoot at in these videos, uh, I don't have access to shooting at them, but there they are. Despite the fact that we're at a bit of an angle, so those are probably more like 340 yards out, they are very visible and clear. Zero chromatic aberration, and the reticle, if you had to hold over to hit those targets, is absolutely perfect for it. I forgot to mention, you can easily pick up the Mirage in the air at 6x on a bright sunny day like this. It's perfect. To shove the illumination, push and hold the button for a few seconds, and it goes off. For the rest of this video, enjoy some ambiance before we get into my final thoughts. Pew pew! Pew pew! Pew pew! Pew pew! That 
shook a lot. All right, so as you might have noticed from this video, I've had the scope for a very long time, longer than any other single scope I've had before reviewing. It's been about a year. It should have been sooner than that. I was ready to go a couple months ago, but when I found out that most of my video files are either missing or corrupt, it really put a damper in my day. I got absolutely bombarded by viewers and Patreon provider scopes that this thing got backburnered for far too long, and I couldn't stand it anymore. I had to get this thing done. Because in my year or so ownership from this thing, I've gone from liking it when I first bought it, to feeling meh about it, to now basically loving the thing. It's one of the most expensive LPVOs I've ever bought. Granted, I bought it used and not for $1,400, but I spent around a grand on this thing. And that's a lot of money. But I was wondering if this would be able to compete with the likes of the P4XI. I felt that you can get something better than the P4XI for not that much more. Albeit, this is $600 more than the P4XI at MSRP cost, but if you could find one of these used like I did for around a grand, I think this is an extremely compelling argument. Even this thing brand new offers a lot of really high quality features for the price. I already made the comparison that the Gen 2 Razer HD 1-6 comes in at around the same price. So what do you really get different from that scope that would probably sway you into this one? Well, the first thing you're going to note whenever you pick up a loophole product, especially something like this, is the weight, or rather lack thereof. Now, I don't have a Gen 2 Razer HD 1-6 on hand, either an E or non-E version, but this thing is as near as makes no difference, 10 ounces lighter than the non-E version and about 6.5 to 7 ounces lighter than the E version. That is ridiculously lightweight. You could add an ADM recon mount and basically have the same weight as a Razer HD without a mount. That is incredibly lightweight, and I'm all about lightweight stuff. This is what? 23.6 ounces. To give you a fair comparison, here is an AccuPoint 1 to 4 in the exact same mount. That does come in a little bit lighter, but granted, this is a 1 to 4 and doesn't have the same great features as the VX6 HD. For another quick comparison, here's a Delta Striker HD 1 to 6. Again, in the ADM mount, albeit not a cantilever mount, it comes in a few ounces heavier. This thing is incredibly lightweight, and that's the first reason why you wouldn't want to go with a loop hold. Another nice thing I really like about it, the throw on the magnifications are always short. Granted, this is not as short as it can be, but it's still less than 180 degrees. You also get a really nice throw lever included, a fast focus eyepiece, which I'm not the biggest fan of, but this one is exceptional. The push button illumination, which I'm not the biggest fan of. However, if you so chose, you can send this to Loophold and they can add a dial here. But I think it's around $200 to $250 to do that. For me, that's a lot of money. If it was like 100 bucks, I'd probably send this in to get that changed out. But one of the biggest things you buy this thing for are these turrets. The CDS turrets are wonderful. Not only are they locking both windage and elevation, but as you saw in the video, the release for the lock also counts as your rotational indicator. Another phenomenal option with the CDS turrets is that you can send all your information on your rifle, caliber, elevation, everything to loophole and they will cut you a custom turret for around 80 bucks. If I do keep this and I throw this on a rifle, I would actually get a custom turret made up for that rifle with the ammunition I'm going to feed it. And instead of having to go 1 MOA, 2 MOA, 3 MOA, it would be 100 yards, 200 yards, 300 yards, 400 yards, etc., etc. It's a phenomenal feature that not many scope manufacturers offer, but Leupold does offer it. There's nothing else to really say about this scope. The green illumination is the only thing that I would change about this personally. I wish it was red, but you get what you get, buying used. You gotta deal with what you can find. I find with this thing in anything less than bright sunny day, it works well enough. I wish it was just a touch brighter like a P4XI, but it's not quite there yet. I think you got an absolute home run on your hands, especially if you're looking for an ultra lightweight one to six that just works. And with that, that's gonna conclude this video. Thank you very much for watching. See you again next time. And a very huge thank you to all of my Patreon providers. Without you, this wouldn't be possible. If you'd like to help support the channel but don't want to join my Patreon, I completely understand. But you can still help support by using my affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for watching.